If you ask me, I would say the most important thing is the overriding interest of the child. Not your interest and not what you think about. And if you're considering the overriding interest of the child, the question becomes, is your decision proper? Is your decision right? Have you actually thought through your decision? Welcome here. My name is El and I'm all right. Thank you so much for following me and joining me on this conversation today. I would encourage you to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get to know when we post amazing videos because from time to time, three times every week, we get to share good content here to educate, you, to enlighten you, and of course, to help you re-examine your worldview. I said that every day we try to share a YouTube shot so that you get something to snack on on the go as it affects sex, relationship, marriage, family, and of course, your mental health. Today, I'm focusing on the question, whether is it okay and proper for a single person to choose to become a single parent? Mind you, today's focus is not on whether it is okay to be raised by a single parent right whether it is okay for you to pull out of your marriage because of its toxicity and whether it is okay for you to say no you don't want to marry the father of your baby or the mother of your baby because of the person's personality that is not the question for today the issue we are examining the issue we're going to be discussing today is whether or not it is right and proper for a person who is single right now to elect to become a single parent either through ivf or through any of the other artificial insemination or through the baby mama and the baby dada <laughs> arrangements right okay this is it i remember a story because i'm the head of the singles people in my church and i'm married i'm privileged to be the head of ministry the head of the fellowship of the singles people and this particular um, information was posted. I remember on the table of men, we also had this discussion because every Wednesday, where's radio here in the city of Ibadan, we get to discuss as men, about six men discussing on the different issues that affect men. This particular lady, her church summoned her because she was pregnant and she was single. So they wanted to definitely... Um, looking to the possibility of fornication, premarital sex, and maybe suction her as the church requires. But then by the time um, she was brought in, she mentioned that she had not yet committed fornication. And the reason was simple. Her argument was that she was about 40 years thereabouts, and she was still single. No brother in the church had proposed marriage to her, and she had not found someone to marry. Besides, because she was growing older and older, she wanted to have a child of her own because right now she may not be able to have children again if she doesn't take this option. So she went to a sperm bank, chose sperm, and got herself fertilized with that particular sperm, and that's how she was pregnant. So the question that went round and round social media was if she had committed fornication. <laughs> that is where we get it all wrong because we were trying to see if she made one mistake if she did one thing right or she did one thing wrong because we think that god's problem is fornication so god does not want you to have sex god does not want you to have premarital sex god does not want you to have extramarital sex but i beg to differ God's issue is not with the sex, but the consequences of the sex, the after effect, the aftermath of having sex with a person who you're not married to. It is because of the consequences that God is saying, no, I think I want to protect you from this. I don't want you to get involved in this. And so God says, avoid this, right? 
where you may still want to argue, but I would suggest you go and read about pair bonding and see the after effect of having um, premarital sex with multiple sexual partners before marriage. You can read it up yourself and come up with your own conclusions as it were. But in coming to your own conclusion, ensure that your conclusion is in line with the academic research and the academic reports out there and not just based on feeling. Yes, talking about based on feeling, that was what this lady was acting on. She was acting on her feelings of, oh, I'm getting old, I'm not finding somebody to get married to, and I think I need a child, I want to have a child, I, I'm having these maternal instincts that makes me want to have a child, so whatsoever I can do to have a child, I think I should do that, I should pursue that goal, I should achieve that reality. But what she was not considering was every other aspect of it. Let's look at it this way. Was this her best option? Was get, get pregnant through IVF her best option? Could she have considered adoption? Right? Could she have considered adoption? Could she have considered fostering maybe a family member who had lost a parent, a family member who they were not so well to do, and the parents were looking for someone else to take care of them? Could she have considered this? That is not our focus for today. The focus on today is as to if she was right or wrong, not if she committed fornication. <laughs> I repeat, the moment you narrate it down to fornication, she will not be guilty. Of course, she did not have premarital sex. So she's not guilty of fornication. But now we are asking, is she right? Was she right to have made that particular decision? As a lawyer, as a family lawyer, and also as a counselor and a therapist, the first um, year of my practice, I worked with the Attorney General, so I was a PP counsel, and my primary responsibility was to serve in the Citizens' Rights and Mediation Center, and that also came with the responsibility of prosecuting cases. And one of the things that we usually did was whenever the police, the IPO, the um, police officer, the investigative police officer brought a fight to our table for legal advice. What we did was not to look at what the complainant, the title, the heading the complainant gave to this case. That was not what to focus on. We did not also focus on what was the report of the investigative police officer. Our focus was on the evidence in every other thing in the file. Right? So from there, we formulated our own um, charges. What does that mean? It means that the police or a complainant can come and bring up a complaint of stealing, but by the time we look at that particular file, we discover that there are many elements of different things. So it may not have been stealing, it may not have been obtaining by false pretenses, we may find conspiracy there, we may find... Um, different other different crimes in that particular file that's why usually people say we lawyers we amplify matters and we blow out matters where we just ensure that our view is not narrow is broad and wide and that's the same view and bring it to this particular matter was she right or wrong that is the issue not if she committed fornication or not <laughs> because by fornication she was clear she did not come in fornication however was she right that is what i want to focus on today if you read the academic researches out there the reports out there you will realize that it is not emotionally heady sociological heady even spiritually heady for a kid to be raised by an individual parent Right? The order is that and God saw that Adam was alone and it was not good for a little man, decided to make him a help me. So, whether you're looking at it from the religious perspective, of the social, um, sociological perspective, or the psychological perspective, the general agreement is the general agreement is that it is best for a child to be raised in a family unit of dad, 
mom and child that's what creates the family right yes there are situations where maybe the marriage phase or one person is tired of the relationship and decides to walk away or one person is denying um paternity of the child and decides to walk away from the relationship and so we have a one person who dies so we have a situation of a single father family or a single mother family but generally the best option is always to have that family unit of a dad and a mom what this lady was doing was that by choice she was choosing to put this child in a single parent family system right and exposing this child to all the challenges and all the dangers that come with that reality we are not talking about her we are not talking about if she was rich enough to pay give the child good education or not we are saying was she rich enough to give this child a healthy family a balanced family a balanced parent because in reality no matter how much you try no matter how much you try to play smart you cannot you are not superhuman enough to act as father and mother together at the same time to a child no matter how much you try right so she was putting this child she's putting this child in a position where in, this child becomes seven years old eight years old 13 years old and the child is wondering who is my father why don't I have a father? What could I, my life have been if I had a father? If I had a father, I would have asked him this question. I would have requested this of him. I would have told him, let's do this together. I would have had this kind of play with him. I would have this kind of experiences with him. She was denying this child of that for life. It is not like, oh, your dad died. Oh, your dad walked away. Oh, your dad is, it is, eh. I did not want you to have a father. I did not want, I, I, I just felt that, oh, I, since I could not get a husband, let me bring a human being into the life. See, humans are not pets. If you're lonely and alone, and you say you want company, then the rule is marriage. If not, go get a cat, or better still, go and get a dog. If you feel that this cannot communicate, then get a parrot. Her decision to bring this human into existence showed her selfishness, showed her self-centeredness. And what the scripture says, he that knows what is right and fails to do it unto that man, it is a sin. <laughs> and now, the right thing for every child is for that child to have both parents attended to his emotional, psychological, social, spiritual, financial, etc. needs. Denying this child that opportunity of fatherhood deliberately is wrong. And I regard that as a sin. I believe God also would regard that as a sin. Again and again, the records show that children raised by single parents are most likely to become criminals are most likely going to suffer the different um, social challenges out there. Yes, yes, yes. There are many of them who were, there are many people out there who were raised by single parents and they came out really great and they came out amazing. But these people are the exceptions. Oh, you're telling me your child will be the exception. How do I know? How do I know that your child will be um, an exception when you are making an emotional decision right now rather than a logical, well-informed decision? You could have adopted if you truly wanted somebody in your life. You could have fostered, but then you decide to bet out of the selfishness of, I must have a child of my own. Again and again, I tell people, that it's not a must to have children. You must not have children. And I'm talking to all those who are married. Because if you do not have the time, you do not have the emotional strength and balance, you do not have all the other things that children need. We are not talking about money because what people usually think is just money to buy diaper, to buy baby mink, to put them in a great school, to give them a driver. No, we are not talking about. We are talking about their other social, moral, psychological, spiritual needs. 
if you are not in a place and a position to give your kids this, don't get, don't have children. We tell this to people who are married. Now, if you are telling this to those who are married, how about those who are single? <laughs> Our advice is don't go near there. Right? So if you're a single person right now and you're considering having a child out of wedlock, having a child and putting that child in a single parenthood system, it just reveals your selfishness, it reveals your self-centeredness, it reveals your value system when it comes to family, when it comes to marriage. It reveals that you are not somebody who is mentally fit and good enough to parent a child. Yes, if you really want to help, go and adopt. If you are adopting, I will not have a problem with that because if you're in Nigeria, um, if you're adopting and you have the same sex with that particular child, you need to be older than the child with at least 25 years old thereabouts. So if you say, oh, I was adopting, I think I needed a child, but I'm not yet married, I'm single, so I want to go and adopt this child so that at least I can share my life with this person, I can extend my love to this. I can understand, yes, we can get it because we can see that you are trying to make another person's life better, you're trying to extend love to a person, you're uh, trying to extend goodness to this person, you're trying to extend the care that this person did not have. It's different from you creating this person that is what i'm against and that is what i'm thinking is not right trust me there are many things that are not right with this there are many things that are not proper and please please i know it may be it may be rampant out there in the western world but you see um like i usually say that um many people in the mental health world who are in the western world who are arguing some of these things they are not mentally stable Yes, of course, we know that they have, they, they are leading when it comes to the mental health issues here and there. So they are not men mentally stable because they have practically not gone through the emotional experiences, the emotional reality to make these decisions. I say it and I'll say it again. Now, before you make some of these decisions, go out there and ask questions. Ask people who were raised by single parents. Ask people who were raised... Um, who we are born through IVF and the rest, if they want this, if they want this, go and ask them. And you see that many of them don't want it. Many of them will tell you that they regret it. Even for those that their parents were terrible and their parents walked away. Yes, they became better off with the absence of that particular parent. But these same people will tell you they wish they had a balanced family. They wish they had a healthy family. My name is El and I'm all right. Thank you so much for following Tina. I want to encourage you to subscribe. Share this with your friends. Hit the notification bell so you know when we post amazing content because we do that regularly every week on this particular channel. And if you want to contact us, use the information shown on the screen and I will be the person that will attend to you. You rock.